Ever wonder how those dog trainers get pups to do the craziest tricks? Or how about those athletes making the impossible look easy? It's like, how do they even start? Well, today we're diving into the heart of it all, shaping behavior. It's more than just training tricks. We're talking about a technique used everywhere, from helping folks recover from illnesses to, yeah, even teaching dolphins to jump through hoops. We've got excerpts from a textbook chapter on this, all about shaping. It's packed with examples, real life stuff. And it really gets into not just what we can shape, but the how. The how, right, because we don't want to accidentally create any uh, problem. Exactly. Think of it like, hmm, an artist with clay. You mean they don't just magically whip up a masterpiece in one go? Even the pros, they have a process. It's gradual, molding, refining until they hit that vision in their head. Shaping behavior, it's kind of similar, actually. We start small and then gradually we're molding the behavior towards what we want to see. Baby steps, right. Okay, so speaking of baby steps, this textbook we've got talks about this guy, Andrew. He had catatonic schizophrenia, hadn't spoken in, get this, 19 years. Yeah, I remember reading about Andrew. His case is, well, it shows just how powerful shaping can be when it's done right. And they started with something super basic, just lip movements. Lip movements. I mean, it just seems, I don't know, so minimal. Exactly. That's the point. They were looking for any little entry point, any tiny behavior they could build on. So instead of, like, overwhelming him with trying to have him speak full sentences, they just focused on those little wins, those tiny successes. Exactly. And slowly... Step by step, they shape those lip movements to sounds, then words. And finally, after a lot of work, a lot of time, Andrew, he could speak again. Hold conversations, even. That's incredible. It sounds like something at a movie, but it's all its all thanks to shaping. Makes me think about learning to ride a bike, you know? You don't just <laughs> hop on and suddenly you've got perfect balance. There you go. Perfect example of shaping in action. All those wobbly attempts, maybe starting with training wheels. Then slowly, you need less and less support as you get the hang of it. Every cheer, every foot you rode without falling, all of it, shaping your balance, your behavior, building up to, well, confidence. Yeah, and probably a few scrapes and bruises along the way, right? Yeah. Part of the learning curve. Ah, definitely part of the process. But the point is, shaping, it's happening all around us even when we don't realize it. We usually think of it as, you know, training animals or teaching a specific skill. Yeah. But it's so much bigger than that. It's like built into how we learn and grow. So, okay, we've got the basics start small, gradually up the difficulty. But what about the actual, I don't know, the nuts and bolts? H how do you shape a behavior? What's going on under the hood? Great question. Let's break it down. Those mechanics. Remember those three core steps? <laughs> detect, judge, reinforce. Right, the three steps. It all starts with observation. you got to detect a change in their behavior. Anything, even a tiny movement toward the goal you're after. So like with Andrew, that first little lip movement. Exactly. Then you judge. Is that change? Is it moving closer to what you want? If yes, you reinforce. If no, well, you don't. And that's where this idea of differential reinforcement comes in. Differential reinforcement. Sounds kind of complicated. Simpler than it sounds, trust me. Think of it this way. You're teaching a kid to draw a straight line. Now they start with a scribble. Then maybe it's a little straighter. And then eventually, boom, nice straight line. You wouldn't give them a gold star for every scribble, right? Right. You'd save the praise for the, well, the better attempts. You got it. You're differentially reinforcing the behaviors that get closer to what you want. And we call those gradual steps toward the target. Those are the successive approximations. Okay. Successive approximations. Ah! I see why you said those terms sound <laughs> fancier than they are. It's like climbing a ladder, one rung at a time. You reinforce those small steps, those successive approximations, till you get to the top, the behavior you wanted. Exactly. And just like with a ladder, got to go at their pace. You can't force someone to skip rungs. Just leads to frustration or even, you know, could be risky. And that brings up something important. Shaping. Like any tool, it can be misused. It's true. You got to be careful, mindful. Like, remember that old saying, with great power? Comes great responsibility. Here you go. And shaping, when you really think about it, it's powerful stuff. We've been talking about it for, you know, skills, good behavior, that sort of thing. But it pops up everywhere. Okay, so shaping superpowers, check. But where else are we seeing this in action? Hit me with more of those real-world examples. All right, how about this? Medical recovery. This textbook, it talks about how respiratory therapists, they use shaping to help patients who've had, say, pneumonia, getting that lung capacity back. Okay, so from training dogs to, what, treating illnesses? How does that even work? Think about it. 
Someone struggling to breathe deeply, right? Recovering from an illness that's rough, discouraging even. That's where shaping swoops in. Instead of just saying, okay, take a deep breath, which is, you know, a lot to ask, they break it down. Baby steps. So instead of a marathon, we're talking a gentle walk around the block first. But how do you even, I don't know, measure progress with breathing? They use a spirometer. It's this device measures lung capacity. Each breath, the patient sees how they're doing, which can be motivating in itself. Mm -hmm. So the therapist, they set these small doable goals. Every little improvement, it's praised, celebrated. Like that aha uh -huh moment when you finally tie your shoes, little wins add up. You got it. And as those mini milestones pile up, the therapist, they raise the bar a bit, always adjusting, always making sure it's challenging, but crucially still doable. And they just keep nudging those breathing exercises forward tiny step by tiny step until, bam, the patient hits that target lung capacity. It really is amazing how this one principle, shaping, it can apply to something as, I don't know, as basic as breathing or in complex as, well, learning to talk again, like with Andrew. Exactly. That's the beauty of it. Elegant, versatile. And it goes even further. Think about sports. Shaping, it's fundamental to how athletes get so good, especially those sports where it's all about precision, control. Like gymnastics yeah. or, or those Olympic archers. I mean, they're unbelievable. Exactly. Imagine, say, a pole vaulter. The way they just, I don't know, defy gravity sailing over that bar looks effortless. But I'm sure behind that there are years of work, right? You don't just wake up and decide to pole vault over like a 20-foot bar. Right. Coaches use shaping to break down every little part of it. The run-up, the plant, the push-off, everything. They might start by rewarding the athlete for just planting the pole at the right angle. So again, taking this big, complicated thing, breaking it into manageable pieces. Precisely. And then slowly, steadily, they make it a bit harder. Shaping each little part of that jump, always building on those successes until, well, until it's ready for competition. It's like they're sculpting a perfect jump bit by bit. There you go. And, you know, this brings us back to animal training, something you mentioned earlier. Shaping is huge there, especially in what's called clicker training. Clicker training, right, <laughs> with that little clicker thing. I've always wondered, how does that even work? Like a magic remote control for animals or something? Huh. Not magic, but I get what you mean. The clicker, it's just a sound, but it means something good's coming. A treat, praise, you know, something the animal likes. So they learn. Click equals Good job. You did the thing. Here's your reward. So it's like a yeah. signal, right? Telling them they're on the right track. Exactly. And because it's this clear, consistent sound, it's really good at marking the exact moment of the behavior, that tiny step towards, well, towards whatever the big goal is. And just like the other examples, they use the clicker to shape behavior, click and treat, click and treat. It's amazing what we can learn from training animals, isn't it? it makes you realize the principles of learning, shaping behavior, they're kind of universal. We've talked about dogs, we've talked about athletes, even, what was it, rats learning to sniff out landmines. But are there places where shaping just, I don't know, doesn't work, where it falls apart? That's a good question. It's easy to think, oh, shaping, it's the answer to everything. But not really. Like any tool, it has its limits. So no magic wand, huh? When would it be the wrong tool for the job? Well, for one, shaping can take time especially if the behavior is complicated, it takes patience, observation, and being okay with changing things up if you need to. So no quick fixes then. Exactly. It's quick. all about those small steps, right? Yeah. Building up to it. And that takes time, consistency. Try to rush it, set unrealistic goals. It just backfires. Can't force a flower to bloom faster by yelling at it. Right. Got to create the right environment. Be patient. Love that analogy. And speaking of patience, shaping, it really needs you to pay attention. Got to spot those little changes, the tiny improvements, and know when to reinforce them. Yeah. Easier said than done sometimes, yeah. especially with like a hyper puppy or a toddler who's decided the walls are their canvas. You got that right. Takes practice knowing what makes them tick. And even when you've got the best intentions or paying attention, there's still the risk of, well, messing it up. Messing it up. You mean like accidentally shaping the wrong behavior? Yep. Like we talked about earlier, the parent who accidentally ends up reinforcing their kid's whining happens more often than you'd think especially when we're stressed. So it's not just knowing the steps. It's about being smart about it, mm -hmm. right? Being aware of how we're using it in real life. Yeah. The good and the bad that can come from it. Absolutely. It's, they say, the road to, uh, well, you know the saying, you can start out trying to shape something good, but if you're not careful, you might accidentally end up reinforcing something you don't want. Right. It can backfire if you're not careful. So it's bigger than just training dogs or whatever. 
it's a force that's always there, shaping how we interact, how our relationships work, without us even realizing it. Exactly. Every interaction, every reaction, every choice, it all feeds back into the system, shapes how those around us behave. A constant back and forth. Wow. When you put it like that, it's a lot of responsibility, isn't it? Not just our own behavior, but how we might be shaping others. We all play a part, and it all comes back to awareness, right? Once you get these principles of shaping, you start seeing them everywhere. How a teacher motivates their students, a coach pushes their athletes, even how we talk to our pets. It's shaping, whether we're aware of it or not. It's like you've given me a whole new way of seeing things. I'm be spotting <laughs> shaping everywhere now. <laughs> so as we wrap up our deep dive into shaping behavior, what's the big takeaway? What do you want listeners to remember? That shaping, as powerful as it is, it's not a hammer. It's more like, hmm, more like a sculptor's chisel. It takes time, patience, and really understanding what you want and how the learner sees things. It's about those small wins along the way, celebrating the progress and not being afraid to change things up. And most importantly, maybe, realizing that we all shape each other every single day with how we interact. This has been Eye Opening. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive. Until next time, everyone, keep those shaping skills sharp and use them wisely. Thank you.